to our show. I'm AJ Dean with Film Talk with AJ Dean, and I have my fabulous guest, co-host, Paul Vato from Las Vegas, comedian, actor, business owner. Hello, Paul. It is wonderful to be here. I'm loving this. I'm loving our series. We're meeting so many interesting people, people that we only know from other social audio platforms, but now we actually get to see them face to face and spend some quality time with them. So thank you for even allowing me to be a part of this wonderful program. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And we have an incredible show tonight. I'm telling you, we have one of the best actresses in Los Angeles. She is Marae Ayers and she has got a wonderful, a wonderful uh, movie she's going to talk about, Traces of Memory. Hello, Marae. It's lovely to see you. I'm excited to be here. I'm, uh, I'm dressed from the waist up. I just want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's needed. That's perfect. And let the audience and all your fans um, guess and be, you know, in suspense of what else you have on. Right, Marae? <laughs> okay. Got my water. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Oh, AJ. It's such so an good. It's such, such a, a it's Thank so you. good to see you. We're so happy. We're gonna jump right into it. Is that okay? You got let's go. Let's do this. All right. So we want to talk and promote your movie, Traces of Memory. Can we talk about that? And um, there's a picture here of you winning an award. Can you oh, share yes. with us a little bit about that? Well, uh, we actually did this film five years ago, but we had to go back and do the ADR because the weather was the third star of the film. And um, originally it started at Theater West in a festival. And I found the play, it was a play. I found the play, got the rights to it. And then I cast it. And it, then we just, uh, after, the, after it closed in the festival, we took it to Screen Actors Guild and we thought, oh, we'll just film it. Well, okay. 11 uh, festival awards winning later, we were, we were in the desert. And it was 101 and the, the crew and everybody and we had the, the honey wagons and we had the catering. We had a uh, Armenian catering truck come up to us and it was wonderful. It was, it was just, it was an experience and we stayed at the, at the uh, mo this motel, but it was very nice. Didn't have any bed bugs or anything like that. So typical location. Um, and it was, a, it, it's an experience I will never, ever forget. For many, for many reasons. And this is your film. And and it's can you fine. can you share with us? Um, you were, I think there was a situation with police cars. Uh, can you share well, with us uh, what happened on uh, set? Yes, there was a, a major situation. Um, we uh, we filmed, and then we we had to stop because we had to then do the interiors, which were done in Los Angeles, and we went back there. The third star of the film was the scenery, and we had to match it. So we were supposed to go uh, about oh about four months later because we had to do some editing. Four months later, and then it was raining, and being that the the scenery, the desert, was the third star, it had to match. You can only, and I know you know what I'm talking about, Paul. You can only do this in a certain way, it, it, you can't fake it. And you can see there in the picture, that's the road that we were on. And wow. that, that picture that you see there, that was taken at six o'clock in the morning. And what happened, I, uh, I was all, you know, really looking pretty bad because I'm kind of a loony bin in person too, but in this film also a little deranged, shall we say, I had a knife in my hand and I'm standing like this and it was six o'clock in the morning. So we only had one uh, security police. We, we should have had, should have, would have, could have, should have had two. But we wanted to cut, try to try to keep the budget down a little bit. So we had one huge mistake, you know, we, you know, anyway, uh, I'm there in the desert alone. The producer is over because it was freezing cold. It was 102 later, but the, the producer was behind the bush. And I said, Mare is gonna be okay. And because I'm out there alone, but a couple of cars did go by and I'm standing, you know, in position because the truck, the filming truck was way up this way and coming toward me. And I had to freeze my position and just freeze it. When they went by, 
Okay, then they came back the other way. Well, in the big, big, long distance, you guys, there was, I see all these lights. And I went, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what's happening here in the desert. It's six o'clock in the morning because everybody else was at the holding, oh, the holding house. Okay, everybody. So there was just the director and then the, the truck, the crew, you know, in the truck, the camera, and myself. My co-star, the other actress, she's back at the holding house and you're know, enjoying herself in this little dress. And these lights keep coming and coming and oh, something must be going on. So I look behind me and I don't see anything going on. And they're about eight feet in front of me, four sheriff's cars. And I'm like this with a knife. Oh my gosh. I'm looking and they all get out. Now listen to this, you guys. There were four of them. There was eight of them, two, 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 two. And four got on their you know, down like this with the gun pointed at me like this. The other four were standing pointed. And the, the big megaphone said, you know, lady, drop the knife. Well, in my acting mode, I said, you know, I'm an, I'm an actress and I'm, and they came toward me. <laughs> and, and then in the bushes, the producer who was there holding the coat, said, Mare, drop the <clears throat> knife. And that's when I realized, oh dear, they don't believe me that I'm an actress. So I dropped the knife. They came at me like this, hands behind, put me in the car. And we didn't, we didn't have a permit because we were, we did for the film, but this was, the retake and these were the some of the dubbing and other things that we had to do and to catch this atmosphere. And so I was in the car. They went up to the the director and the crew and they had to show proof that we were filming that I wasn't some deranged killer out there with a knife. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And 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 you know this is what happens. I see how I am right now. I'm up and Oh no, I was like this. Oh wow, yes, it must have been terrifying. Uh, yes and no. You, your, your whole being goes into another mode. And I was just very calm, sat there very, in the car very calm. And the, the officer looks, puts his head in there and he was, he was not nice. I said, sir, I'm an, I'm an actor. This is a movie, we're making a movie. And he didn't quite believe me, you know? So then uh, they went and talked to the director and, they, and they, had, they had to show footage from the camera. Paul, they had to show footage to prove that this was real. And they did. He comes back and said, next time, get a permit. You know, this goes on everywhere. Uh, I mean, we had major permits. We were out of town in the desert, a couple of hours out of town. And we had major permits, but this was just some pickup shots. Why should we pay all that money for these permits? You know, and I have friends who've made a lot of films and they, they scoot here, they scoot there and they scoot here. And, and then in the film, you'll actually see it. You'll actually see the cars, you see the lights, you see them, you see the two people walking me and I was Canatonic. And I had to film a lot of dialogue the rest of the day. Wow. I was calm like nothing happened. It, it, it hit me three days later. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and the fe when we did some of the festivals and they found out about it, they had all the other filmmakers. They didn't want to talk to the other filmmakers. All they wanted to do is talk to us about what went on. Can you imagine that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I felt badly for the other filmmakers. <laughs> Well, it's such an amazing story. Um, it's also, um, you know, because uh, there's a lot of production teams, isn't it right, that, that film guerrilla style and they just, right? Oh, yeah. It's, but some of them get fined. Some of them get closed down. Oh, no. A friend of mine almost had a major production closed down. A friend of mine, yeah. So it happens. But, oh, my goodness. I'm so glad that you uh, survived that. And thank goodness that that director had that 
videotape for proof. Oh, well, yeah. Well, they had already taken the shots. Like I said, the, 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 the truck was coming by me with the camera. So wow. he done that. Yeah. Amazing. Paul, what do you think about that? Well, if <laughs> I were the scary. producer, if I were the producer, I would have just jumped out of the bushes when they're there and been like, cut. <laughs> like, uh, you guys ruined our shot. <laughs> 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 no, he was scared you know that they threw him in the in the cop car too they they, they went like and they went like this on me you know and they went like this on him too yeah oh. yeah but when they let me out and i'm walking like this and they had there was the producers on one side the directors on the one side i was just i was i was canatonic i was just like this the whole the rest of that day did it affect your acting then in a positive or negative way or? or, or no, it didn't do anything. It didn't do anything. I was just, I was calm. I was just focused and calm. And I'll, I'll tell you both a little thing that happened the, the, next, the, the next day, the next day we went back and then um, we, I was watching television and I saw these sheriff's cars on television and I lost it. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I, started, I started crying and I, yeah. So it's amazing with the nervous system, what, what happened. Sure. Yeah. Incredible, incredible story. Thank you for sharing that with us, Marae. Uh -huh. And uh, so what is the lesson for, what is the lesson for all the filmmakers out there? Be careful. <laughs> when they tell you to drop the knife, drop the knife. Don't say, I'm an actress. Ah, really? Drop the knife because right after that, something happened where the woman, a woman got shot. She did not have any weapons, but she had something. She didn't drop it. She walked toward them. They shot her. Okay. I was lucky. I was lucky. And you, wow. you two are lucky because here I am. Yes. We are so lucky. Isn't that right, Paul? A hundred percent. Can you imagine? You say that, Paul. <laughs> what? Yeah. What a tragedy. I mean, we had something similar happen back in Chicago when we were practicing our our show. Uh, and I don't know if this is the right time to tell the story or not, but yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we were in, in our director's apartment downstairs uh, in Chicago, and sorry, Chicago, because uh, we don't have an accent. And we were downstairs rehearsing. And I still, and it was, it was so ironic because, or coincidental, I should say, because the scene that we were filming, that we were practicing for a stage show, it was with Salsation, our Latino improv group. It was basically, uh, and maybe we're just practicing. I don't even know. I, I don't even know if it made it into a scene, but uh, A. Rios like says, freeze, or I'm going to shoot you or something like that. And then like five seconds later, the door opens and it was two Chicago cops and I can't remember if they had their guns drawn, but they must have because they heard freeze or I'm going to shoot you. They opened the door and we're all standing there because there's nothing in our hands because we're rehearsing improv, you know. Right, right. And Tilda, I mean, Tilda, Ava, and I don't know, you know, she's Puerto Rican. And so she's very loud, not to stereotype. So she was like, freeze or I'm going to shoot you. You know, something to that effect. And oh, yeah. literally five seconds later, the door swings open and we were mad at the director. We're like, why didn't you freaking lock the, why isn't the door locked? Because she right. could have gotten shot just from going freeze. You know, the timing was off by literally oh, five seconds. God. You know, oh, had, had they busted the door open. Cause, and yeah. it, it was because the neighbor upstairs uh, complained because we were being too loud or something. Okay, I, that, that was going to ask you what happened. How did they know about this? So it was a neighbor upstairs. Yeah, but, but you know, it wasn't like we were rehearsing that scene over and over. We we're just doing improv. And, you know, when you have five or six people together, you're all laughing and you're improvising and being funny, you know, uh, it, it might get a little loud. But she could have also just called downstairs and said, hey, keep it down. Because I, I, I remember it wasn't even that late. It was like 10 p.m. But maybe for her it was. It, and she was, you know, a little out of it so but she didn't have to call the yeah, cops she on was us scared. she was scared and yeah yeah so no, okay so you know you know you know a little bit of, you know the feeling that i was feeling it's a shame it was fear yeah yeah yeah, yeah. wow yeah, but we're, and, we're just and they're like looking around like we're like what and they're like and they're like looking for weapons and we're like we're actors we're improvising they went oh god oh <laughs> yeah a, a, a and, then, and then and then i was like 
I mean, I or I forget who I, I think I was the one I was like, you can't come in here, you know, you can't just open the door and walk into somebody's home. And so I remember that they backed out because they knew that they'd messed up, you know, because because they just opened the door. It was unlocked. You know, then there, there was no I don't know, because I don't think they heard that, you know, but it was yeah. just yeah. five seconds. Wow. Oh, Paul, thank you for sharing that. So you understand completely sure. what Ray went through yeah. it. And, you know, it sounds frightening and um, there's really no way to prepare for it, but it sounds like you both, you know, kept your composure through it all and kept your, you know, cool. And that's a wonderful thing that you, you know, got through it. I mean, incredible. Yeah. But but yeah. there have been situations, I remember reading or seeing a, uh, one where, where uh, there, there were uh, military people doing military exercises with with not with live round, you know, with their weapons not oh, loaded, wow. but they were doing military exercises, and somehow cops heard about it, so they came. So the military people think that the cops are part of the exercise, and they they, they were in a standoff with them. I think they shot some of the soldiers because they didn't know the cops didn't know that these were unloaded weapons that they were in the middle of an exercise, uh, and I remember seeing that going like, oh my god, can you imagine? Because the soldiers are are doing their job, you know, yeah, they're training know. their job. You know what? They're doing, they're doing their job. They're doing their job. Yeah. And the, and the cops are doing their job, but they, they right. have loaded Everybody, weapons. Everybody's doing their job. I have a mm -hmm. scene, I have a, I have a monologue like this that I do at Theater West for our Zoom thing that's very, very similar. And, and, and I'm, uh, I'm a defense lawyer and I'm defending, I'm defending the cop who shot someone in self-defense. He was doing his job. That's what he was trained to do, which is protect and serve. Those are that's actually, that's actually my line in there, and um, that's that's what hap that's what happens. They they don't know. They can't take a chance. They mm -hmm. it, you know I see both sides. I see both sides, and it's sad. It's sad that you know. But anyway, we're here to talk about it, and and we're we're happy and. <laughs> I'm so glad that you survived it and everything got sorted out properly and and uh, yeah. calmly and, and, and safely uh, for you, Paul, and for you, Marae. I did want to ask you, switching it up a little bit, I did want to ask you, um, who is your favorite actor that you have worked with? You know, uh, and Will Smith is up for uh, Academy Award. And he was so sweet to me. He was so sweet. We, we ate together. We, it was called the Will Smith Show. And I played a snobby person, hair back, really snobby. And I was nasty to him and snobby. But, you know, my favorite person I ever worked with, really, personally, was Brian Dennehy. And I, when he passed, I, I put all his picture and everything. He was so sweet to me. I played a homeless person and I had a great role, you know. I mean, I didn't look too good. Anyway. He was so sweet to me. He took the time and he talked to me because I had a couple scenes with him. And I would say he's my favorite person that I've, that I've ever worked with. And there for a while, and my name was Ruthie, I would send him little notes, but I couldn't send it directly to him. So I'd send it to his agent. He sent me back little notes. I go, you know, happy holidays. Love Ruthie. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a wonderful, such a wonderful um, share, isn't it, Paul? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it really is. And, uh, you know, never having worked with him, but always yeah. admiring his work. I'm glad to hear that because it's nice to hear when, when, when people that you admire their work and they're Ooh. wonderful actors and they turn out to also be wonderful human beings. Oh, and physically imposing, you know? Yeah, How yeah. Imposing. I didn't, because I'd only seen him on the screen when I met him that day. I went, whoa, I said, you're a big guy, aren't you? <laughs> I think that, that did it. I think that did it. <laughs> that broke the ice, right? Oh, yeah. It broke something. <laughs> <laughs> well, cheers to that. And um, I wanted to also ask you, well, actually, I wanted to announce to everybody that you're also a celebrity dog trainer. Yes. Isn't that right? And can yes, I, I, am. I have, I've had some wonderful clients. And, you know, I'm on this show, so I can name drop, right? Am I allowed to name drop? Please. Okay, one of my favorite clients was Bruce Springsteen. And he would always come from the gym. And his wife, Patty, and they had a dog that I actually called her one day and said, can I have, can I have Cody? And it was a black uh, 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 a shepherd, black uh, uh, 
something a shepherd, but anyway, because Cody was not that well. And I fell in love with Cody and Cody fell in love with me. And I would go to their home and the guards all knew me, you know, and he was so sweet. So when I made my Amare's Kiss Method obedience dog training and safety drills that, that sold on amazon.com, I wanted his dog to be in the video. And Patty called me and said, no, because they didn't want the publicity in the eyes. And I could understand that. And another client of mine was Mrs. Bob Hope. And I never met him, but one day he drove by over in Toluca Lake, he drove by and she goes, oh, there's Bob. I went, hi, Bob. <laughs> and, and I was there with Baxter, little poodle. And so I wanted Baxter to be in there. And um, she, they used to take Baxter everywhere and they would have a private jet. And so the secretary is the one that broke the news that I couldn't have Baxter because I wrote Baxter in the script. <laughs> I wrote Bruce's dog in the script. But Bruce was very sweet to me. And he had these two children. <laughs> They're older now, but I had these doggy biscuits, homemade doggy biscuits. And Mare, I want a doggy biscuit. Can I have a doggy biscuit, Mare? And I used <laughs> one day I told Bruce, I'm feeding your children doggy biscuits. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he said, Do they like them? I said, they love them because they were very good. And then, but I ended up with uh, Richard Dreyfus's dog that was a pug. So that's in my video. And Mr. Blackwell, I don't know if you guys know him. He was the best dressed, the worst dressed. Yep, of course. Uh, he, he was in my video. I wrote his, I wrote his dialogue and he said to me, uh, he took this, he took the thing like the script like this, you know, I got one over here. He said, I don't use this. I ad lib. I went, okay. <laughs> and we did it. And it was great. It was great. And then, um, uh, um, oh, oh, Art Linkletter. And my, my, my parents were never proud of me until they found out that Art Linkletter was my celebrity guest with his big German Shepherd Max. So, you know, and I've, I've had other ones. I had uh, the, the before Bruce Jenner. He was one of my clients and Robert Downey Jr. And I remember when I was teaching them, you have to teach a dog to go potty, you have to have a word like, let it go, let it go, make it out. But mine is pushy. Go pushy, go pushy. <laughs> I don't, when people are on the street, they go, go pee pee, go poo poo. That sounds awful. So I would say pushy. And so I went there one day, and I think he was feeling pretty good, shall we say. And I came there the second time and he said, Mare says go pushy, Mare says go pushy. <laughs> I said, you know, Robert, I'm going to put this collar around your neck. And he, but he was a doll. He was a doll. So they, uh, uh, he wanted to use let it go. So let it go, let it go. So that's what I worked with him. And uh, they say, oh, I, got, I got other ones. But anyway, those that's are amazing. Was, was, I'm sorry, was that Robert Downey Jr. you said? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, well, I can't wait. I can't wait to meet him, hopefully in the men's room as he's walking out of a stall and go, go pushy, did you go, go pushy? pushy? Did you go pushy? Did you, did you, did you go pushy? His word, his word was, and I hadn't used the word, let it go, let it go. Because I let people choose their own words, but I, I like pushy because I think it's kind of cute. Yeah. Breeds. What is the easiest uh, breed to train and the hardest? I'll tell you real fast. I'll tell you real fast. I tell people, and I've done it on many talk shows, there's no such thing as a dumb dog. That's number one. Number two, it's never, it's never the dog's fault. I'm not easy on the two-legged. I'm really not. I was only fired once. Okay. Because I was kind of hard on them. No, when it comes to neutering and spaying, I will not, I will not uh, train a dog if it hasn't been neutered or spayed. I, I have my rules. Okay. They can go somewhere else. And, you know, and I charge everybody the same amount. I turned down Elizabeth Taylor to work in her house with her silkies. She wanted me to live there five days a week, you know, and, and be with the, I know that's not my life. I don't want to live there as a, you know. Anyway, the, um, it's never the dog's fault, but the, and I've trained so many, but the most, I'd say the most challenging to train are the Siberians. 
And I had I had Zashi that was side beard. All my dogs have been sheltered, have been you know rescued. But Zashi was um, Malamute and Siberian. Now he was easy. He was easy to train because of the Malamute. But Siberians, they're 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 like what? What you want me to do? What? No, I'm busy right now. No, no, I can't do it. No, thanks. I'm sorry. What did you say? I'm serious. In order to get their attention, you have to take their little heads. Look, I'm talking to you. Hello. Yeah, I'm serious. No, they're out of their tree because I teach dogs how to do the treadmill. And I had I had uh, one dog that I don't like to train. I do not like to train a border collie. I do not because I don't like to train a dog that is smarter than me. I had one border collie, 10 minutes, did the treadmill. I had a Siberian, took eight sessions to teach, for me to teach that dog how to do the treadmill. Does that tell you anything? Oh, yes. And, and, and Marie, weren't you in bed with uh, training a dog? Uh, well, I was in bed with a woman because what? <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry, could, could you slow down with this story? No, 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 Paul, I was. No, seriously. <laughs> be I, I know, I know. Oh, Go be on. Be behave yourself, Paul. Behave yourself. <laughs> Hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, what happened was the dog jumping on her bed and in her bed with her. Oh, so, okay, got so it. So what I said was, here's what we're going to do. Being an actor, I'm able to do uh, enactments, okay? So I said, you get into bed. She was... <laughs> This old lady, oh God. So we got on the, sure enough, the dog jumped on the bed. So I did the drill. To make a long story short, by the time I walked out, the dog no longer jumped on the bed. But if the people don't do the drills that I teach them, because I charge a little bit of money to walk in their door. If they don't do the drills, that's their homework. And I yeah. If you just do it five minutes a day, maybe a couple of times, but it's consistency. It's no different than Paul, us being entertainers. We, you know, I've, I've got a, I've got a script right here. I'm not allowed. I'm doing Monday night, working on it before you guys came. So it, it's constant. It's consistency and regardless, whatever, whatever it is you do. So I give them their homework. And one other thing, they can always call me. And I'm there for them. And I, I don't charge for them. And I do, I do charity work for the homeless. I do charity work for dog trading. And if a person has neutered his fate and they've rescued a dog and they need me over the phone, it's a service I will. I'll give them 20 minutes, a half hour. I will. And, and so they know they have somebody at least that they can talk to. How do they contact you, Marie? How, how, uh, how it happened really through... Uh, through Clubhouse. I was in a room, Bobby Del Rio, Rio's room, and it's, uh, I forget the name of the room. It's a funny room. It's a funny room. And oh, you have to give a gift. You, that's it. You have to give a gift. And my gift was, if anybody has a dog, I can help them over the phone. No, I can't do the sit, stay down, come heal with the leash and show them how to, how to heal and all that stuff. But I can help them. And I had a I had a guy who was who was one of the head improvisers back in Chicago. He's oh my God! I taught him how to do the out drill. That's when you put something like this in front of a dog, and they won't they will not take it. You say out, they won't take it until you go okay, okay, okay. And that <laughs> that that stops the, the dogs from eating when you have a party or something eating from a person's hand. And I don't allow anybody to, you know, hand feed my dogs when they come for parties or anything. No, but so I, I, I've had oh a few people, and then they, I say, call me back, give me a progress report, and they do. And I, so I've helped people that way, but also word of mouth. I'm known as a trainer, so they find out and they call me, and I say, okay, I, you know, I can help you, and you've rescued. And then when I lived at this other house. I worked for a couple of organizations, German Shepherd Rescue, uh, and, and then Star Paws Rescue, who's run by Victoria Burroughs. Okay, if they brought the dog to my house, which was, and across the street, I would train the dog, would not charge them, but they had to write a check to the organization, I would mail it, because I found out the hard way, 
if I said, oh, just send the check in here, they never did. So what I did was I wrote the check so they could send, so I could send it, I put the stamp and I knew it would be done. I love that, I love that. So that leads me to my next question. What's important to your heart, Marie? Right now it's some food. No, okay, what? <laughs> right now it's a glass of wine. <laughs> no, what's important to my heart? Hmm. What's important in my heart is, is what I'm doing now with my spiritual life, which I've, I've been in Law of Attraction, which is Esther Hicks for 13, 14 years. And I, I speak on two Zoom rooms for my Law of Attraction. And um, it really is, what means more to me is, is how much love can I give out? I'm, I'm not being Pollyanna. I'm being very, very honest. That didn't hit me until three years ago when I went through a very traumatic situation where I lost the greatest thing in my life, okay? Which is my husband went to heaven. I don't wanna make everybody cry here, but that's okay. I, what did I do? I had two choices, either to pick myself up and keep going or to stay down there. And I decided with my spiritual faith to keep going. And that's when I decided how much love can I give out to the world, to, to people, to, to the two of you, to the clubhouse, to people I meet, a stranger on the street, just a smile. Th that is really what I stand for now. Yes, I'm continuing my acting. Yes, I'm doing all that. Yes, I do Clubhouse. Yes, social media. I love social media. I'm one of these people that love social media. I posted tonight about the homeless. I'm doing another homeless thing on uh, Sunday for a smaller group. Last week, we fed 150. This, uh, this coming Sunday, we're going to feed probably 50 or 60. You know, So I, I do many different things of giving out. But none of this happened before... I lost what I lost, I have gained. So I thank my husband. <laughs> I'm getting a little, little emotional. That's okay. I thank my husband for that. He yeah, gave, it's in, incredible. He gave me a gift. He gave it's an me incredible a gift. story. It's so beautiful, isn't it? And and we're so sorry. Uh, we, we send you our condolences, but Marie. It's a beautiful story that you are continuing the love and we can feel that. Isn't that right, Paul? A hundred percent. And everything Marie says, you know, I can attest to because that she exudes everything that she said, you know, the love. <laughs> and I feel it through Clubhouse. And I think maybe because it's an audio only app, uh, it's yeah, even more, it's more honest. It's you know very what? transparent. Pa Paul, and you know what? I spoke about that. Somebody, one of my friends asked me about that. And I said, Facebook? Instagram, Twitter, you can be, you can be. But Clubhouse, yes, the first time you're on the phone, you can, you know, you can BS, okay? Uh-uh. If you hear a person over and over, you really know who they are about. That's how I got to know AJ. That's how AJ and I became friends, be through that, you know, and, and, the, and the love that we had for each other. You know, you, I just found amusing. <laughs> and you I'm surprised I've got, I've gotten away with it for this long. People still think uh, I'm this legitimate guy and not this fraud, you know, so. Uh, and you, you yeah, were supposed to, I must be you a were very come good and sleep actor. on my couch, remember? You were going to come and sleep on my couch when you, and you never did. I went, where is he? <laughs> I, I still will. Sometimes, I forgot what happened with that project, but uh, uh, I, I still, I, I appreciate the offer and I will take you up on it. If anything, I would just love to to meet with you and uh, uh, and uh, break bread and have a cup of coffee or or wine. Wine also, I'm good with that. But I, I can't wait because you exude all this love and energy. You know what the world needs now: this positivity. Love, <laughs> and you have a beautiful voice. You're a great singer. Yeah, you know what? That's another thing. I, I hadn't vocalized for two years. I've been vocalizing now for three months. And I was supposed to, do, I was hoping to get in this cabaret show at Theater West, but it had already been cast. But I don't care. I'll be in the next one. My voice, my voice is there now because I'm, I'm legit, legit singer. You, you are legit. And you played, is it, I'm, I'm forgiving. <laughs> 
Uh, you play the drums also? Is it the drums? Oh, I'm or? a snare drummer. When the Saints go marching in, John Philip Sousa. I got my drum out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you do. I do, honey. My drum is in the other room. Yes. Wonderful. Aren't you sorry? Wonderful. As a guest. <laughs> The, the, the name of the room, uh, and I don't know if we can say the word, but is is uh, uh, people who get pushy done. <laughs> it's Bobby Del Rio's room on Clubhouse that 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 that, that you offered your dog. My, my, I, I, push, my pushy room. Okay, pushy. Okay, oh, that's the room. I think you give away. You give away something. I haven't been on it lately because I haven't been free in the afternoon. But when I go on the room again, that's always my gift. And it's a wonderful gift. I, I mean, I almost want to go get a, do- a, a poorly trained dog just so you can work with them because you are wonderful at that and it shows and it's wonderful. So, so thank you, Marie. <laughs> oh, thank you. Wow. Woo-hoo. I just wanted to uh, thank you so much for that. That is so important to share, you know, what's important to you in your heart. And we love that, Marie. We love you and your energy. And thank you, Paul, thank you. for that. Um, I did want to ask you one other question about acting. Um, that, oh, that. <laughs> yeah, acting has been so much a part of your life. Um, oh, yes, it has. And yeah. who, who have you enjoyed training under? Um, okay, my, my, okay, I, I've worked. I have, I think when a person studies, I mean, there are some, there's some couple of famous people who really just work with one person. Um, I have gotten so much from so many, but my first favorite, my, my, a coach that has meant so much to me, New York, of course, right, is Tom Todorov. He has the biggest uh, conservatory there. And I originally met him about seven years ago, but I've been studying, you know, with other people. But I met Tom at Screen Actors Guild and it was free. And whoa, the way this man teaches. I mean, and he's amazing. And then I took a weekend seminar. Then I then I was with him, and it's it's in Instagram. His picture of myself, and he has German shepherds, which he like we we had in common with that. And then his wife, Emily, they got married. So I became close that way. But a brilliant, brilliant coach. He knows more about theater, and he, it's it's theater, 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 theater. Yes, he's directed films. So that's that aspect, the theater training. And I've done a lot of training with Theater West. I've been a member for 18, 20 years with Theater West. Oh yeah. And I had to audition to get in. And so I've trained with a lot of good people there. Then there's a trainer out here. She's become very well known. And she, uh, we've become dear friends also. Her name is Amy Linden. She does not teach acting. And she says she is not an acting teacher. I disagree, she is. But she teaches how to audition. There's a big difference between auditioning and you're on the job. When you're auditioning, you're in a room and, and the, the right now it's all um, self-tapes. But I'm in my room, there's a backdrop behind me in my other room and there's a camera. I have to create the environment. So when you, uh, that, so the difficult and most challenging part is the auditioning. So she teaches you how to make that space your reality, your environment. So Amy teaches that and she teaches how to book. She's a booking coach and uh, her 15 guideline is amazing. And then I've taken from a wonderful woman who also became a dear friend is Kimberly Jensen. She does everything. She does uh, cold reading, she does improv. And I've taken many improv. I'm a student of, of Second City. I've taken many of their courses. So an actor, in my humble opinion, is no different than a doctor. They always have to be studying, studying your craft, study your craft. I'm working on this monologue. Uh, the next week I made a new one. And then I'm vocalizing almost seven days a week. And I'm working on this one number. Then when I feel good about that, I'll work on another number. My point is, it's, cons- it's like dog training. It's consistency, consistency. Keep it up. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. And then actors come over to my house. I film them and I'm their co- I'm their reader. So I get to pick up a script like this and cold read. So that's, it's practicing, practicing. 
Did I answer your question? I hope I did. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to Paul uh, for because we, we're gonna be starting to wrap it up, unfortunately. But I do want to meet you one day, Marie. That's my dream to meet yes, you. You know what? I was thinking about that. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I was thinking about that today. I was thinking about but, that. But before I hand yeah. it over to Paul, I wanted to ask you this picture here where you're winning an award at the Los Angeles Cinema Festival of Hollywood. Can you share with us a little bit about that? Well, that was just, we won 11 awards. And he said, yeah, that was just one of, that was just one of them. We, we, we won the cinema photography. We won for the story. We won for the acting. We won for the, we won different aspects of, of uh, the audience favorite, you know? So we won different awards and I've got some of them in the other room, but that one particular picture, uh, the, the, the whole cast was there and we took photographs, that's just, that's just one of them. And then you have a Q and A, and you know, I know Paul knows this, you have a Q and A and the, the director and sometimes the star, you know? And I was the executive producer. So they had the director and then myself up there. They didn't have the actors up there. But um, it was a Screen Actors Guild because that's the only thing I would do. And everybody got paid except one person. There's only one person that still hasn't gotten paid. Is that you? Yeah. Yeah. I have never gotten paid. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Well, can, can can people buy this, or is it available to buy or to rent, um, or how can people you know, see? I've got, to talk, I've got to talk to my my director about that because you can go onto my website and you can see the trailer. It's it's called www.tracesofmemorythefilm.com. Da 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 da. I can play it on the drums, okay? But uh, it, yeah, I know. But there was a way. And it, it's called something and all there and you have to pay, I think you pay $3 or something like that to, to see it. But you know what, what we're gonna do, I think we should put it on YouTube. We should do something like that. It's, it's 14 minutes long, okay? With the credits and everything, yeah. And uh, you, in order to do these films and get them in these festivals, they have to be under 20 minutes. Longer than that, you're limited. So, yeah. Well, congratulations on that, Murray, and your whole production team. I know it's uh, that you're very proud of that, and I'm proud of you for doing Traces of Memory as well. Thank you for that uh, question. And Paul, over to you for final thoughts. Well, uh, I'm going to try to make this very quick because I really have to go uh, uh, make pushy. So thank you. Okay. So can we wrap it up, please? On that note, until we meet again. Thank you, Marie. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go. All right, thanks, Marie. Gotta go pushy.